Speedrunning is sick! I've always been interested in speedruns, but recently I've been learning more about niche games and categories from events like GDQ and ESA. I was watching GDQ Hotfix the day before Frost Fatales, and there was a run being showcased for a game called Fear. The run being showcased was for the glitchless category. As I was watching, I started thinking, wow, this is really cool. It's basically like a super fast playthrough of a game that has been forgotten over time. I wonder what cool tricks they're going to use to beat this game as fast as possible without glitches. That, that's a cutscene skip. They just skipped a... Now you're gonna hear uh, one sound by it play over and over and over again. We're skipping past a cutscene by not triggering it. Isn't this a glitch? Well, no, but also yes, but also no. Pringle Studios defines gaming glitches as unexpected software errors or flaws within a video game that cause unintended behavior or graphical anomalies. You could argue that the ability to walk around a cutscene trigger is just an oversight, but the audio repeating, audio repeating is unintended behavior, meaning that this is a glitch. So some of you might be asking, why are there glitches in my glitchless speedrun? What the f- I think that Pringle Studios' definition of a glitch is really good, but unfortunately, gamers historically can't agree on anything. That, in combination with the fact that every game is different, means the rules for glitchless speedruns are decided on within each game's community. So while Fear's community sees this as A-OK, -okay, the Majora's Mask community decided to ban all cutscene skips from their glitchless category. Some communities, like Slime Rancher, even take this as far as ban Banning sequence breaks, which means you're not allowed to access areas of a game early, even if you can do so without glitches. Slime Rancher also lets you do this though, so I, I don't know. These discrepancies are what make glitchless speedruns so weird. It's the only category that exists throughout multiple games where the rules change so drastically. If you go into the forums of any game with a glitchless category, you'll find tons of discussion surrounding what is and isn't a glitch. Some communities even require voting to be held to make these decisions. So if maintaining these categories is so much work, what's the point? Once again, let's look at Majora's Mask. If you hop on the speedrun.com page, the first category you'll be greeted with is any percent, no major glitches. A normal person might look at that and go, oh, okay, if there's no major glitches, then I'm sure I'll have an easy time learning this speedrun. No SRM, no debug menu, and no text overflow. Those are the only rules. Here is the list of banned glitches for a glitchless any percent run. Now, which one do you think a beginner should start with? The only downside to glitchless runs is that turbo nerds view them as easy and stupid. The fact of the matter is that we need glitchless categories. They're easy for casual viewers to understand, which means it's better for viewership, and if you're getting more viewers, that means you might drag more people into a game that might later explore different categories. If you're still not convinced, then I challenge you to watch a glitchless run of Portal and then come back here and tell me that that run isn't cool or difficult. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. The original idea for this video was to call glitchless runs stupid. And to be fair, I still feel that way about the discrepancies in the rules. But I found a new appreciation for the category after I put myself through it. Fun fact, I'm a big Batman fan. I've played all the games, watched all the movies, read a few of the comics, dressed up as him for Halloween, built the Lego Shadow Box Batcave, and own a crystal Batman that my girlfriend bought for me. It's the whole deal. Most importantly, I play the games. In fact, I revisit the Arkham Anthology about once a year because I enjoy them that much. While researching this video, I came across a glitchless run of Arkham City, and I immediately thought, 
Yeah, I could do that. I haven't done a speedrun in over two years. I didn't practice, I just ran the game for four days. After about like 20-ish hours worth of total playtime, my personal best is 1 hour, 34 minutes, and 20 seconds. This puts me at 28th on the leaderboard, just 14 and a half minutes behind the current posted world record. Some of you might not think that getting 28th in 4 days is good. And I'm here to tell you, there's the door, you can leave right now, because I'm proud of myself. It was definitely easier to learn and remember this run compared to speedruns I've done in the past, but improving my time was very difficult. Since glitchless runs have so few options for what they can do, the route and the tricks you perform are pretty set in stone. In other categories, you might learn a new way to do something which saves you a portion of time, but in glitchless, your only real option is to improve your movement and make less mistakes. These things take significantly more time to learn, and since these categories are usually longer, being able to move just a fraction of a second faster adds up over the course of the run. You effectively place everyone on a level playing field. There is no difference between me and the world record holder in terms of what strategies we used or what route we took. The only difference is that he is significantly better at the game than me, and he knows that because he verified my speedrun. This category is truly humbling. Despite this newfound appreciation, Glitchless is still a weird name for the category. While it's probably a good thing that each game's community agrees on what is and isn't a glitch, what I should expect as a viewer shouldn't be so drastically different from game to game. The other unfortunate part about glitchless existing is that when you make these decisions, you might upset some runners in your game. Ocarina of Time's community formerly had a solution to this with a category called Bug Limit which was just a less restrictive version of Glitchless. Funnily enough, for most games, Bug Limit would actually make more sense as the name for the Glitchless category, at least in the state it currently exists. So in short, if you wanted to solve the confusion that exists around Glitchless speedruns today, you could simply change the name to something that would be more fitting, such as Bug Limit. The other option would be to create a universal rule set for Glitchless that could then be very slightly tweaked to best suit each game's community. It would certainly be difficult to make this work, but it's definitely possible. My only other idea is to have every game do something similar to what Majora's Mask does. Having a no major glitches category as well as a glitchless category is amazing. If you wanted to refine this even further, you could add something like any percent restricted, which just allows you to create whatever rules you wanted to. Or even, like I suggested before, bug limit. How do you feel about the glitchless category? Do you think that it's in a good state? Do you think they need to change it? If so, what do you think they should change about it? Let me know in the comments down below, and while you're down there, like the video and subscribe if you'd like to. A large portion of you are not subscribed, and I would really appreciate the support for the channel. Uh, by the way, speaking of support, thank you guys so much for all the support on the Ocarina of Time video. Making that video took about three months of on and off work just to make sure that it was the way I wanted it to be. So seeing that it did as well as it did makes me really happy. Uh, I appreciate each and every single one of you. I've read all of the comments. Some of your takes on, on gaming are a little, a little weird, but uh, you know what? We can agree to disagree. That is the point of an opinionated piece like Does It Hold Up? Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you all in the next video. Goodbye.